Welcome to Switcher Chats, music interviews brought to you by Music Matters with Daryl Craig Harris and Music Tribes Unite. Hi everybody, um, this is Daryl Craig Harris with Music Matters Podcast. I'm here at the London Jazz Festival at the beautiful Toulouse-Lautrec Jazz Club, which is a great place, yeah. fun, fun intimate venue. And I have Laura Ivy. Edie. Edie, okay. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I thought I was at the get up, I didn't get it. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, being at the London Jazz Festival, your music, which I was checking out today. It's great. Thank you. And it's interesting because you're more, the, more than just only jazz, you're kind of world song, or singer songwriter. And, yes. So, um, and also, too, you split your time between Athens and, and London also. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about that. Okay, yeah. I, <laughs> I know it's a big, it's a lot to cover. No, no, but. you got me in a nutshell. So yeah, I, um, it, it's funny because I, obviously I was influenced by a lot of music as growing up. So mm. I am predominantly a singer-songwriter, but I love to incorporate elements of jazz, which is what mm. I studied, and folk and indie, so it's all there. Okay. And yes, to answer your second question. So I was born and raised in Greece, oh, but okay. my family is mo very multicultural. My mom is Canadian and my dad oh, okay. is from, yeah, from Lebanon. Awesome. So, so, uh, I'm kind of based, yeah, between Athens and London at the moment. I mm -hmm. was living in London until recently, and then COVID hit, and I decided to relocate back to Athens. Oh, okay. So, every opportunity I get, for instance, this is the first time I play the jazz festival, um, I took it. So, I'm, oh, I'm here okay. to do that, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, touring from Athens. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, it's interesting, too, because, I mean, obviously, Greece has a, a, a huge cultural mm. with art and music and also Lebanese too. There's music and, and the food is amazing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, it is, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's really, that's actually a really interesting mix. And it, you hear that in your music because like I said, it's kind of to me more, it's almost like world. It's kind of an interesting yeah. mix. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you record, how, how does that process happen as far as songwriting? And is, is that just very organic or do you just have to sit down and schedule sessions? And so the, the, the process of writing the song itself? Right. It's a good question. Um, it's never organized with me. Mm. It always happens <laughs> organically. Yeah. I tried. And it's funny how that yeah. is. Everybody has their own process. Everyone has their own process. Yeah. It's, um, I think when I write my own music, it usually happens when, uh, you know, it's always taken inspiration from life events. Ah, okay. So it could be travel, it could be a change, it could be mm. a relationship, it could be something happening in your family or world events. Right. And as a consequence, I think, um, which you picked up on the sounds are all different textures and soundscapes right. which I love to explore with. Yep. So sometimes I'd be sitting there with my phone and recording something like a melody mm. and then I'd go home if I'm very inspired and dig up some yeah. lyrics that I have. So I have a lyric book and a melody book. Interesting. Okay. They don't often go together but when they do it yeah. turns out into a song and then I either you know compose it myself mm. or if I'm feeling inspired to collaborate with people I you know mm. call my amazing musician colleagues to come and help yeah. me out. Yeah and collaboration has been a big part of your of your music career too. Yes. So tell me who are some of the your your most fun collaborators or people that you work with recently? So one of them is here uh, okay. and she's performing with me tonight. And she's right there. She's right there behind <laughs> the camera. <laughs> um, and her name is Nadja Sharif. She's a brilliant pianist. Brilliant awesome. Composer. <laughs> Um, and so she's, yeah, so she's one of the people in London that I collaborate okay. a lot with and her husband as well, Dave Mannington. Okay, awesome. So we played as a trio mm. and I, um, I collaborate with so many wonderful musicians that for the now yeah. the names are escaping me. Well, it's great too <laughs> because you're having London and also, also Greece. I mean, there's so, mm -hmm. and it's the, the diversity has to be really amazing with that, I would imagine. Yeah. It is, yeah. And it's. It's funny because I never really, I, I don't play or sing Greek music because I'm, I'm not really Greek. Oh, okay. So I grew up speaking English with a very international. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say actually, too, because when you're singing, you don't hear any kind of an accent. Or, no, it's yeah. very Canadian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so awesome. when I, yeah, when I collaborate, I, for instance, in Lebanon, there's a bunch of people I, I always collaborate with. Um, Rafi Mandalian, he's a hmm. fantastic oud player. Or in Greece, it's usually a, a cellist called Stavros Paraginos. So oh, I have my go-to people right. who become like kind family. Kind of inspire you. Yeah. And, yeah, they inspire you. Become, and you know, it's important in music to build relationships with people very organically. You know, right. they're not just someone you work with. They become your friend yeah. and your extended Yeah, they become the sort of musical soulmates in a, in a fashion, right? Yeah. yeah that's... And you're lucky if you get more than two or three. So. Right. No, I agree <laughs> with that, yeah. Um, so you're working on a new album, and it's, uh, mm -hmm. did you say it was a quartet? 
It's a quartet. Well, it's actually more than that because it's strings yeah. and, and kind of... Tell me about that. Yeah, no, I'm very excited. So um, on my last trip to London, actually, um, in October, mm. I came and played with a, a friend of mine, a percussionist called Alba Cabral. Okay. And I love the fact that it was just piano and percussion. So when I go back to Greece, mm. I actually changed the entire sound of the album. Like oh, I said. okay. Yeah, so it's okay. quite... It's I'm finally writing music mm. that you can move to. It's not right. necessarily dance music at all. Yeah. But, it's but it has very, a vibe and very a groove. groovy. Yeah, because there's a lot of soul in what you do. It's, a, it's really fun to listen to. Oh, I, cool. I really enjoyed it. I'm really glad you say that. And and um, from coming from a bassist, you're a bassist, right? Yeah, yeah. That means a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's taken on a much more groovy feel and I'm awesome. um, bringing in a lot of electronic mm. sounds to it. And I'm... I'm working with a, a wonderful string quartet in Greece. Awesome. Composed of two Irish and Greek musicians. So oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it just interesting becomes mix. bigger and bigger. <laughs> right, right. And then when I come to London, I'm going to um, perform it with uh, Dave Mannington, Nadja Sharif, and Sophie Alloway okay. in Greece with my quartet. So I'm, awesome. I'm really Yeah, lucky. it's nice because you kind of have different flavors and different textures. And Absolutely. Different approaches, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and fun. I think that's the, that's the way it's become for a lot of musicians that have yeah. sort of left you know, to go back to their original country right. or, you know, it, that's that's what touring and yeah. growing as a musician means. Well, to I think, you. too, because, you know, we we're talking a little bit about social media, but today with social media, it's become really global. I mean, I live in Las Vegas, but I talk to people all over the world, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you do, too, via, yeah. you know, online and people are interacting with your music around yes. the world. So yes. it's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. Like, I, I think lockdown in particular, there was a lot out there which helped musicians. Mm. Um, because, you know, we have to make money at the end sure, of the day. Sure, yeah, so have to survive. Was, yeah. yeah, so there was a lot of, like, wonderful platforms which sort of, like, when I was putting out singles, I had to do mm. a bit of research how to, like, you know, completely... How to market them. Yeah, right. release it well and properly. Yeah. And I think even before uh, lockdown, I love the fact that social media, you can use it in any way you see fit. And, I'm, right. and even that, for me, is quite organic. So mm. I, I noticed that a lot of people respond, have responded to my music since the very beginning of my music portfolio oh, career yeah. online right and that's so awesome I, which is yeah. great and they show up at the gigs and they're like oh yeah i listen to you on youtube yeah. and, and you said because i know yeah. you said you mentioned you had a few albums out or eps but then you've been doing really a lot of singles yes do you think that 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 sort of format works really well for you so it didn't happen that way so when i moved to london to study at guildhall mm -hmm. i sort of took a break from um composing mm -hmm. and then once i graduated i went Full blown into teaching. Oh, okay. so that took a and lot I was going to ask you about teaching too, but go ahead. Oh, Sorry. cool. <laughs> so, when I taught, actually, I, I realized that I, I just missed. I mean, I love teaching, but I really missed just being on my own and just composing. Right. So then, I couldn't, for the life of me, think of ten songs at once. So I just started oh, okay. putting out singles, and yeah. it began with Damien, mm. which played a lot on BBC Radio, which was cool. Right. And then it became with reworks of my favorite standards one mm. which you'll hear tonight afro blue yeah and i think with the social media format too it's almost it's almost easier to promote a single yeah than a full album right in a way it is it is and a lot of artists like even the, the very famous ones are doing it because yeah. they're realizing that they're start releasing one every six weeks every whatever yeah. You know? yeah yeah and the record companies i mean you know from la like right. i don't really see them being as active as they were so right. therefore it's kind of become I don't know if this is good or bad, the role of the musician themselves to take on the role of yeah. admin, manager, promoter. Well, I was talking to our friend, and I should mention Fiona Ross, who's right over yeah, there, yeah. Um, who represents women in jazz media, mm -hmm. which is a part of the, the what we're doing here mm -hmm. with this series. And um, we were just talking about that. It's, it's really interesting how the world's all changed with that stuff as far as marketing, promotion, yeah. all that kind of thing together. And so uh, teaching-wise, I know you do a lot of... Um, I guess, would you say clinics, or how would you say, um, working with, with young artists and, and, and that kind of thing? So my teaching has become really um, uh, versatile, mm. um, and I'm really appreciative of that. For instance, I was just in Leeds giving a workshop at the conservatory. Right. Um, that was the word I was searching for, workshop. Workshop, yeah. <laughs> clinic, workshop. Uh, it's kind of, well, it depends. It's, it, maybe it's different here than... than I know, so, I say so. workshop, but I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I love giving workshops to aspiring songwriters, and... At the same time, I also lead choirs, and I love working with uh, community, yeah, choirs and right. songwriters. So for me, I'm oh, I always make it a point, depending on the context, of mm. course, of drawing in people who may not necessarily be professional musicians who just want to pick up an right. instrument. And you have to sort of find a way to approach that, right? Yeah, I love Cause that. Because it's like they're in their own sort of gear, and you're, you, mm -hmm. can't, you, have, you can't just force them to be a professional because that's not what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. And you don't want to force it, but right. I, for instance, I used to lecture at City Academy, and uh, I used to do um, all sorts of things like voice 
contemporary voice, jazz voice, world music. Mm. And um, it was interesting because the most talented people in my class were people that never studied music in their lives. Oh, interesting. Bankers, lawyers. Right. And I love that. For me, I just had this entire gamut of London at my feet. And yeah, like, yeah. And for yeah. me, it was just about sussing out the dynamics of, like you said, right. how do you work with these people? Yeah. But the point being, teaching is, is, is something that we should take just, it, it's, um, it's a precious gift. And yep. I think that not because we're teaching, but mm. because, you know, especially now, music yeah, should it's, be Yeah, it's a available. privilege to be able to teach people in a way, you know. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you know, part of what we do as musicians is trying to survive and te often teaching is a way to do that. But it's also such a, um, it's a responsibility and a privilege to be able to, and you can always learn from people too. Absolutely. Even if they're not professionals, they always have something. Oh, all the right? time. Yeah, there's always something there. That, all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think it's amazing. And I love, I love listening to people and I just, I get so inspired by my students, awesome. you know. A lot of them are coming today. So. Oh, great. That's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's your advice to young singers and songwriters as far as uh, just getting into the field and, and what's the, that's, what, what have you learned along the way? Mm. I sort of took a long way around. Hmm. I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you learn. You probably you learn, learn a lot that learn. way. Yeah. But looking at now, but like it's not maybe not the easiest way. Not right? the easiest way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think no. I, I think my advice would be make it about the music, hmm. and everything else will follow. Yeah. I, and I believe that too. I think, and you find your lane, the people will, will discover you. Yeah. You know, you just sort of help them as much as you can. But yeah. You, and find people that, that support you and right. don't let go of them. Yeah. I, I cannot stress that enough. If you find one mm. person who believes in you, yep. that person is going to help you. you yeah. Know? And that person will turn into five and it'll turn into 10. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you have a nice full audience for your show. Exactly. <laughs> so it all works together. Exactly. Um, how can people find you online? Um, so it's quite easy. Um, so you can find me on Instagram, mm. um, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. All, all the usuals. All the usuals. Yeah. Um, but you can go to my website, which is a lot easier. Okay. And that's www.lara, my name, L-A-R-A, E-I-D-I. Mm -hmm. e awesome. Music. Com. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Laura Eady. Awesome. Yeah, so I would encourage, and also your music, um, a lot of it is on Spotify. A lot of it, yes. So, and it's amazing, and I would encourage everybody to please check that out. Um, Thank you. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Yeah, I really enjoyed listening today. Um, and it's great. I, I, cause for me too, I listen to kind of everything. I think it sounds like you do too. Yeah. So that, that's yeah, a, yeah. It's, it's fun to, to hear that kind of uh, in the music, so it's exciting. But um, everybody, please check out um, her website and I'm going to put all the links in the uh, the podcast episode so we'll have everything available everybody can find you thank you and uh, thank you to the Toulouse Lautrec Jazz Club and Women in Jazz Media for arranging yes. all this amazing <laughs> and our friend Fiona Ross who's right over there Fiona <laughs> but uh, awesome great thank, thanks so much for joining us thank you ciao bye. bye you can follow us on all major podcast outlets at Music Matters with Daryl Craig Harris Thanks for joining us and catch you next time.